Hello again. Uh, we're moving on to our next lesson in Unit 5. This is Lesson 5.3, and we're going to talk about complements of sets and what that means to be a complement of a set. So we start with a universal set, and we call it U, and then we let A be a subset of that universal set. So the complement of A, which we're going to write as A um, prime, with that little tick mark there, we'll call that A prime, that is the set of elements that are in U, but they're not in A. All right, so for example, if U was this universal set of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, if A was the numbers 1 and 3, that is a subset of that universal set, then A prime is going to be the uh, elements that are not in set A. So that's going to be the elements 2, 4, and 5. Okay, uh, let's talk about some properties of the complement. The intersection of a set and its complement is the null set. There should be no nothing in common um, with those two sets. The union would get you back to uh, the universal set that you were starting with. And the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in A prime would be the number of elements in the universal set. So those are the three properties of um, a complement set. So another example. Um, let's let U equal the letters of the alphabet, and let's let set A be the set of letters in the word ambidextrous. That means that A prime would be all of those letters that are not in the word ambidextrous, and they're listed there. Um, so as you can see, A and A prime have no common elements, and together they contain the entire alphabet. So as a union, um, you would get every single letter of the alphabet with no repeats um, by combining those two sets. The number of elements in A is 12, and the number of elements in A prime is 14, and so the number, of, and that matches the number of elements in U being 26. So all three properties hold for my set A that I've chosen and um, A prime, which I've figured out from that. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.